Good morning. It's uh, 10 a.m. on Pacific Time, and today it's uh, June 21st. We're going to continue the open hours that we were doing last week with Eugene and Carity from the uh, from the Axis front end team. We had uh, they joined us last week to talk about the the product and some of the decisions that went into uh, going native versus web and uh, to give somewhat of a high-level description of the product, what it's doing, and uh, some of the architectural decisions and the, and the YUI components. What I want to do this week is spend the whole hour talking about just the Mojito configuration. So where Mojito is coming into, into the equation. And uh, maybe, uh, Carity, if you wouldn't mind even doing just a very high-level description of what Mojito is and, and how it comes into play. And I think what we're going to try and do in a couple of weeks, we're going to do another Mojito talk that's going to be specifically about Mojito and just sort of how to get started with Mojito. Uh, I, got a, I got in touch with the Mojito team, and they said they'd be uh, really interested in doing that. And so that sounds, uh, that sounds great for the, uh, for the intro to and... Uh, seeing the pieces getting built up into something that's functional and some of the decisions you make along the line. So there will be more Mojito in the future. So this, uh, so today's episode is going to be uh, sort of more focused on the Axis product and how, as a reference implementation, in some ways sort of a post-mortem. So I guess we're sort of going backwards, right? We're saying this is something that's already built with it. And it's uh, it's out there. It's working great. It's successful. It's getting good reviews. And so this is how this instance was put together. And then we can take a step back and say, uh, uh, look at the building blocks involved in that a little bit later. So let's see. Um, business. Um, you know what? I don't want to spend too much time on business this week. So I think that there's going to be plenty to cover. Uh, with uh, with Carity just going over the mojito thing, so I want to give as much time to you, Carity, to do the details as as we have time for. So I'm just going to pass it over to you and I'll let you take over. Okay. All right. Let me know when you see. All right. Now it's coming across. It's a little small, but it's coming across. Um, so yeah, so last week we covered some of the decisions that we made and also some of the YY components that we, that we use. Um, I'm happy to announce that Eugene put some effort on getting one of them in the gallery. I think it's just, yeah. So the whole communication layer that we discussed um, Eugene last week uh, awesome. is already there in the end. Uh, we will be talking a little bit about how we actually use this between our Mojito apps, and we will see how it works. Hopefully, you can see and um, go and look at it and, and try it out. Uh, but th let's just jump in into Mojito. So, um, one of the things that I want you to talk is how we are using Mojito today, what is Mojito, and, and how uh, we make some of the pieces that we use in Access today based on Mojito. So Mojito is just an application framework, um, um, completely written in JavaScript. So it, it works end to end uh, as a JavaScript framework uh, on top of YY and for the server side, it runs on top of uh, Express. And um, it's basically organizing the way that we work. Um, it's more like an organizational like structure. Um, so you can create these independent pieces and use them all together to create a bigger application. Um, and we have some really cool stuff in there. Um, let's just jump in. So one of the things that Mojito has that no other framework out there has is what we call uh, the configuration. Um, so there is a difference between, in the market today, there is a difference between optimizing your application versus uh, adapting your application for uh, specific conditions. And, and this is missing in most of the, of the frameworks out there. For example, um, 
you want to deploy a component or an application into a device and you know a little bit about it. You know, maybe uh, what kind of device is that, you know, maybe uh, on what network are you running on or, or what is the server that is serving this application, um, stuff like that that you know upfront before actually sending that content into that particular runtime and then executing that application there. Um, that's what we call, uh, in terms of optimization, what you can use upfront to decide what you're going to deploy or what you're going to send to that client. Um, and later on, when you land in that uh, particular uh, runtime, uh, your application, your JavaScript application start uh, ramping up and initializing all the pieces, you might get more and more context about the environment that you're running on, the condition, the screen size, or whatever. So Mojito was built on top of this idea of configuration and contextual configuration. And it's pretty cool because it's something that we, we, we don't have in JavaScript. Um, um, we don't use in JavaScript that much, but we have been using a Yahoo, that kind of technique for the server side for quite some time. So bringing that into JavaScript work was interesting for us. Uh, so the, the initial entry point for a Mojito application that runs in the server side, and this is just the application that runs in the server side. Remember that Mojito can also run on a different runtime, but for now, let's just focus on that one. Um, so you basically deploy your application in a server, and this application will serve traffic. And that's one of the things that, that we mentioned the other day. So we have this application here. When I type, uh, I'm, I'm going to get a specific content that will be coming from a server that will be rendered that content. At the same time, when I load this page and I inject access into it, it will go and get access from the server or some pieces from, from the server. In the case of the web interface, it all comes from the server because we don't have an installable piece that we can put into the browser. Um, in the case of iOS, some pieces are part of the bundle that we put in, in the App Store. Some pieces are coming over the wire. And when I mention pieces, I'm talking about JavaScript applications. So you deploy a page that has a bunch of YUI components there. It runs in, in, in some sort of browser. Um, so in the sense of that kind of application that you are getting it from over the network and running on a particular runtime, um, we have this concept of, or the Node.js concept of creating a server. So we can create a server in Mojito. The difference here is that you have a little bit of context about that server. And in, in our case, we're just saying, hey, this is the environment name that we are running on. We might have different environments. We might have QA development, production, staging, and so on. And you can still have more contextual information about this runtime. So you're saying, yeah, this is probably, I don't know, full and is equal bar. Right? So you control, whenever your application runs, the initial context in which this application will be run. And based on this contextual information, you build up a bigger um, uh, context. And we'll talk a little bit about it. So basically what I'm saying is that whenever you run an application remotely in a server, deploy it in that server, you can give the, that application a little bit of context and then you use that context configuration. And on top of that, this application is already running there. Uh, it's a Node.js application running there based on Express. And whenever a connection comes in, a request comes in, we have more contextual information about that request. And and that means that we can now also collect information of, about that user is trying to access our application and augment the contextual information that we have and then serving an optimized version of our application for that particular user for that particular request. Um, so that's the way that Mojito works from the ground up. And as I said, this is the initial server creation process with context information. And then from there, you you get into what we call middleware. And it's also in a structure that we have in Express. In, in, in the middleware, we can get more contextual information. Like, for example, I'm saying, if the user is accessing this application from within the Java network, and we have a way to identify that. So we have a uh, internal component that does that process. 
um, we will set a new textual information saying the network that this user is running is a wide net or is just in. And so on. So you can start adding more and more contextual information. And this contextual information could be anything that you want. Imagine that you have something like, I don't know, you, you might want to have some sensors or something, and you maybe require that as the NPM component or whatever, or maybe it's just something that is just coming from the process um, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Imagine that you have this sensor structure and this sensor structure will will be providing some sort of here sensor. And then we can have contextual information saying, yeah, the request is has some context and this context could be the uh, CPU uh, data state or whatever. And you can say, yeah, the sensor is uh, CPU is hot, then set this to uh, hot or, the, or do anything else or whatever. Or whatever. So what I'm trying to say is that you can create your own sensors and your own context in the context of the request that comes in, the server that you are running on, the condition in which this server is running. So you will build up these contextual objects that will give you the exact condition about a particular request and the current server and the current process. Um, and then based on this context that, that you are building up here, um, you will pretty much be able to find how your application will respond. In our case, um, we use this contextual information, um, first of all, for the application configuration. So application configuration means we have this giant configuration for our application that tells us what kind of data we should be using to produce the response that our user are expecting based on the condition of that request. So for example, here we have the master configuration, this is generic configuration for everyone. And then on top of that, we have, for example, by default, we have no locks in the server on the client. So this is production configuration. We have um, some sort of uh, configuration for YUI, for example like the loader configuration that we use today. So this is what we want to do in production. We don't want to use CSS. We don't, we don't want to allow roll-up and so on. Um, we want to have some sort of aspect for our application, and we'll talk a little bit about it, for access that Tracking is another option that we have. So we want to have tracking information. We want to gather all this information from the user. So what we do is we define a basic tracking information for our application in production, and then we start customizing this thing. And customizing means we are going to target specific context information. Uh, for example, we are saying here, yeah, if, if the server is running, if, if this is running, this script is running on the server side, or the runtime is the server side, we want to have some other context or some other configuration. But the same happens for environments. So I'm saying, yeah, if I'm running on development environment, which means probably my local host or my development uh, box, I have this debug enabled for us, so it's easy for us just to debug and go deeper. Even for YUI, we have the loader. We say, yeah, we want to not use a combine, and we want to also exclude all these locks that we don't care about, um, and so on. So you have more and more contextual information. So you can pick up specific configuration. And then, um, for example, we use, uh, let me find, for mobile, so for mobile, you're running a mobile, and we will see how mobile means in the context of access. Um, we want to have some specific tracking information, overriding whatever we have in the master configuration for tracking. And the same happens for tablets and so on. So you have some sort of configuration that you will be targeting for specific contextual uh, requests. So this 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 one is also interesting. Like. When I'm running on uh, a mobile device and I'm running on localhost, so my development environment is local, my Mac, I want to have the console show up because that's the way that I easily debug stuff when I'm running a simulator or an actual device or whatever. It's easy for me just to have the console because I don't have the 
the browser console there. So stuff like that, is you, you can be very specific in what kind of corporation do you want to use. So you actually extract a lot of logic out of the YUI component. So the YUI component no longer needs to have all this logic. Um, and this is just application level, but then you drill down to a specific component. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. Like for example, um, here I have one module and we'll talk about the module right away. But this one yeah, has also full set of configuration that are only relevant for that particular organization, or, or that particular component or that particular structure that we want. Um, so um, to give you some examples here, I'm saying that for, for this particular module, and we will talk about it, uh, but for that particular module, I want to use a different engine by default. So I have a cache engine. We talked about that last week, a different cache engine that we use um, for a lot of stores. So for this general um, configuration, I want to use this offline cache. And then I can drill down and say, yeah, but uh, by the way, when, when I'm running um, crawl view by default, we'll have these operation and this bouncing and this deceleration process or um, parameters or so on. So we are moving a lot of logic out of the actual code into configuration. Then we can use it. We'll see how, but, but when you drill down here, like for example, we are saying that for mobile devices, we have different bouncing, bouncing property for for mobile because we know the, the inertia on those devices is a little bit different or even the, the range that we want to have these cars displayed or not. And we talked about that last week, how we optimize the, the search layer to display only the cars that are visible. So when you scroll, we, we might need to bring those cars up. Right? We also bring down some of the other cars that are not needed anymore. So the deltas for that process could be customized for the Different context. Um, so it allows you to basically track uh, all the configuration um, so you don't need to have that logic, that uh, forking process in your components. You have that as part of the configuration. So it's really easy to optimize the way that your application will run for different contexts. And that's about it. Um, this is the way that we, um, that we that, that, that we can optimize. And then after that, we can start um, uh, looking into other process, the client side specific in the run app to change the way that access behave. It. But this is all about serving what is specific for that particular um, user and that particular request. Like for example, the meta, we have basic metas and then we have metas that are only affecting um, uh, mobile device. So for mobile device, we have this specific meta that we want to include and stuff like that. Um, so the whole concept of contextual information and, con and context configuration is built in in Mojito in, in, very, in, in a very nice way. It is complex to understand because you have all these dimensions and all these configuration that kind of write each other and so on. So you have to get your head around it, but once you get to that point and you understand how to leverage this, the power of this configuration is really easy to just augment your configuration. So we have a lot of uh, in so can you, um <clears throat> Security, can you describe the difference between what you're looking at now is definition.json. You also have a defaults.json in that same directory. These are both children of an app directory. Yeah. Um, so basically, definition of JSON is um, based on, on an instance of your module. So whenever there is an instance running, I, I plan to talk about what is how Mojito handles instances of modules. But basically, definition of JSON will provide a basic structure that you can pick up at the application uh, at the instance level for a, in a specific request. So Mojito creates an instance of, of a module and then create an instance of an action context. Now, I won't be talking about the action context, but this action context is tied to specific requests. So for every request, it will create this action context. And this action context 
will be able to get information out of this um, based on the current context associated with that request. Uh, so in, in a sense, it will filter configuration based on the action context and the request. You will get this data. Default so JSON is more like static configuration in, 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 in YUI uh, base, for example. So you have those pieces as part of the MOJIC definition. They are there. They are um, part of the class definition. And um, defini uh, definition of the JSON is more like attributes that you dynamically can set up and modify and so on. So it's some sort of analogy with the YUI structure. But basically, this provides a way that you can access properties directly during the initialization process. So this is config coming from, from default or JSON. So it's like a static value for that. And this is created once. It doesn't change much. But then okay. the definition of the JSON change every time that you access um, this object created for this module. OK. Um, so we don't use that much, this one. Sometimes we just put it here. I noticed. The, yeah, because it's pretty much the same. Uh, although you can use basic uh, contextual information to customize this default or JSON, but only stuff that are server side related or the initial booting process of the server will give you some contextual information. You use that to provide different static values. But in my mind, um, um, it's kind of hard to, to define that line between that. So usually we just use one of them. Um, okay, so, um, okay, there's a question. Oh. Um, so that's the way that the configuration works. So whenever, whenever you want to create um, a, a new component or a new piece of your uh, as part of an application, you first of all have to define what exactly you want to use in the configuration. You can augment that later on, but you have to think in terms of configuration when you use one. Um, so other than that, um, this configuration, the initial configuration for application, the JSON, and so on, happens before actually hitting the route. Um, so, sorry. The, the, middleware, the middleware execution and the definition of the basic contextual information, the request, the context value, uh, is defined before hitting any of the structure that are defined by Mojito. So this happened pretty much before booting Mojito for that particular request. So that gives you the ability to define different routes depending on that configuration as well. So saying here, I don't have any default route master route. I just have routes that are for runtime server, so they are only used when this application is running on a server, and these are all the routes uh, that, that we use and so on. But we have other routes, like for example, we have this admin interface, but this admin interface, don't worry, you cannot access it, because you have to be in the Java network to be able to access so, so this is somewhat have, reminiscent of uh, this is somewhat reminiscent of the app frameworks router component in that it's it's accepting information from the URL and it's routing the the operation of the response is handled by a particular set of functionality, right? Yeah, and it, it is a nice way just to say yeah, these routes only work on the context of the server. So in the client side, you cannot use mm. them, but maybe you want to have routes in in the client side, so you put it here at the master. Or you can do runtime client, which is also available as a context for information. So you, 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 you might define a route that will travel to the client. It will be useful in the client side. You can create a URL based on that route, or you can just invoke it or whatever you want. It will travel to the client side. In our case, we don't have that use case in which we need routes that will be running on the client side. We all use those routes at the server side. And that doesn't mean that from the client you cannot access. I'm saying that in the context of Mojito, Mojito will have a handle to this route only when it runs in the server side. When it runs in the client side, it doesn't care. It doesn't use them. It doesn't look at it. It doesn't post them. Um, so it's a nice way to have these. And, and the same for this one, also really nice. And I just 
don't need to have all these process just to allow people to control the access to specific routes. I just have a contact. Um, um, the same happened when I'm doing it in my Mac, so I don't want to, I, I'm not running on wide network. I'm probably not connected to the VP for Yahoo. I'm just using locally, so I, I have also my desk definition here. So allow me to do admin when I'm also running on, on that. Um, so stuff like that. And then, so this, this the process of, of routing in, in access is just, yeah, we are referencing an instance of a module and this module will have an action that we are going to execute. So this is pretty much it. So whatever we do with this route, we just execute this app frame and this app action. And we will look into it right away. So this is the app frame, for example, of, of the app and module, call it app module. And we have a controller there that for now is only on the server side. We decide to have all the controllers on the server side. We don't, we don't push any, any of them to the client side, but it's also doable for Mojito. But in our case, we just want to have this controller in the server side deciding what to do. So what we do here is that basically um, having this app um, action and this action receive what I mentioned before, the action context. And this action context is what give you what what gives you the whole uh, information about the request that is coming, the server that you are running on, the runtime that you are running on, and so on. So at this point, we decide what to do with some of the pieces here. Like, yeah, I want to render this view, and I want to uh, probably um, make a call and get some data from a different server, and then producing an HTML content that will be sent to the client side, stuff like that. Um, but in a sense, it, it's, it's just like that. You have this route that will execute this controller. This ex controller has a specific action. This action will produce an HTML, JSON, or whatever kind of response you want. Um, so in Access, that's the way that we have um, different response for the client side. Now, this brings us to the next topic, which is how can you, how can you define this blur or you define this line that is a little bit blur between what is a module, what is an application, what is a route that produces a type of context and so on. So it's, diff um, it's, it's always difficult, but in the context of Mojito, is is a little bit simple because you just have these individual pieces, like you can pick up this and drop it into any other application and it, it should just work. You have the proper route for it because it does, doesn't have any connection between this guy here and all these other modules that we have down here. So it's not, they are not coupled. There's not, nothing there that tells you, I really need this other thing to run. Um, so that's, that's nice to have. So you have this organization um, of the pieces in your application. Each of these pieces can probably provide an, a, so an app that will run on the client side. Yep, so security is then each route is a one-way street, or is it is it possible to to similar to routing an express or routing in the app framework to go from one route and pass on to another route and and so on and so forth? Um, not really. So the route okay. is uh, only one way. Although the action that you're going to execute, mm -hmm. um, that action could be a composed action. So you can have um, or the things that will happen in, down the road when you execute that particular action. But only one of them will respond to that particular uh, request. Oh, I see, okay. Which is a little bit from what we have in Y, right, yeah. Um, um, so organizational-wise, what we have is just this module that will have a bunch of stuff into it, like configuration for a controller, to decide what to respond to specific requests and so on. Um, the views that are just regular mustache views or handlebar views, whatever. Um, models and, and binders is the most important one. We'll talk more about autoloads that are just resources that you can use. And all these is just YUI. Even the controller you see is just YUI. Um, you have a YUI definition here. You just set the controller and just work in the sense that an action for that particular module 
already have a, con a controller to control that action and so on. Um, binders is kind of a structure that will go into the client side. So in a sense, is the app that you're sending to the client side, the pieces that you will instantiate in the client side. And as we mentioned before, we have this, and Eugene mentioned this last week, we have this kind of YUI that module that, that will be instantiated in the client side and it will give you a handle uh, for some of the pieces that you have in the HTML that you just ship to the client side. And in Access, one of the decisions that we made was to not produce not produce HTML content or response from specific request that could not be potentially cached, at, at least for a few minutes. So that's one of the trade-offs. We don't make any 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 call to any API to produce data upfront and to produce HTML content upfront and send it to the client side. Um, although this is uh, some, something that sometimes you have to do, like Twitter is now coming back and doing some pre-rendering at, at the server side before sending content to the client side and so on. But in the context of, of Access, since we um, just plug this thing into pages that are already loaded, for us it's easier. It doesn't come up automatically, so we have a little bit of time to go and fetch things before we actually display to the user. So it's it's more suitable for us just to not do any 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 request upfront, just send HTML that could be casual for ten minutes, twenty minutes, one hour, or whatever, with configuration that is specific for that user for that request, and it will boot really fast in the client side since we are doing this over the network. Um, and then we do all the process to gather information and so on. But that doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be the case for you. It all depends on the application. Um, but, um, so yeah, so the binding process is pretty much the same. The, the beauty of, 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 in the sense of, access, in, in the context of access, and let me switch to this one application, is that in the binding process, what we're doing is pretty much uh, really simple. So um, let me give you some quick demo here. So you can see, so this is Axis running on a page and I'm looking for images here. I'm clicking on this guy, I don't know. Um, and I start going next and next and next. And you see this thing here, um, some sort of an application. Uh, it's also in sync with whatever is happening down here. So I'm moving and it also moves whatever happened down there. Um, and if you remember from last week, we talked about how we want to split this into individual pieces. And these pieces are independent, so we want to have different people developing these pieces and they just ship to production and we have a common API to have this connection between these different pieces. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, so this whole application, and you use it in the app, but it's the same, um, is just, an application that we ship to the client side. And there is another application down here running the same, in a different scope, a different domain, different route, and so on. So how these two pieces are in sync in the context of access. So the way that we do it is really simple. Actually, I can even scroll it. Um, so you see that So this is an application called App Image. And this is an application created by someone. Um, that when you look at the code of this application, it's just a module. Um, this module has everything that we need to create this experience for the user. And what we have is basically a very simple controller that only has this index, doesn't have anything else. And then it will just render this particular view that you see here. And this is just building this thing that runs in the client side. Um, and if you're looking to trying to access that application directly, this is what you see. This is not, it doesn't work. It doesn't have data, it doesn't do anything. Um, but when you run this in the context of access, what happens is that this binder here 
will get executed whenever this HTML, which is also cacheable because it doesn't have any specific data or anything like that. It's just basic markup with some JavaScript and CSS, ship it to the client side, cache it there, and open it right away. And then what we have here is just uh, the initialization process to create a couple of other pieces here and there. And then using, again, the communication layer that we talked last week. And what happened here is what we're doing is basically um, when we do the initialization, so we are creating a new struct, a new configuration layer using some configuration. And this configuration is coming from the contextual information that we have in the server side. This contextual information goes from the server side to the client side, computed based on the request we made. Um, so what happened in Access here is that we create this bunch of node to cache reference to node blah blah blah. Uh, we bind some keyword keyword interaction and we bind the CL, the communication layer. And this is the important piece. So what I'm saying here is saying, yeah, whenever there is an update message coming out from someone, uh, we will see who will be sending this. What we're going to do, I will, I, I will fire the, the, the update handler and this will bring all this data visually, right? And by the way, just notify to my pattern that my pattern application that I'm ready to start receiving that kind of data. So send me those updates and I will do something. Um, <laughs> and what happened is that um, at the minute that you trigger this ready, so the pattern application, which in this case is uh, is this team now here, is the the Axis application itself. Um, it will start sending updates. And the update will be the initial content, right? the picture of this data here, blah, blah, blah. And what happened is that when I, for example, click on next, so I don't have the whole context of all the data that I need to display. I'm just receiving a piece of data that represents the current picture and telling me if there is a next and a preview. That's, that's about it, nothing else. Doesn't give me the actual next and, and previous picture itself. I just want to know if I have it so I can display this arrow um, in here. And then from there, what happens is that every time you click the next or you use the arrow or whatever, what we do, we fire an event back to uh, the panel saying, hey, by the way, I want to get my next page. So send me the data for the next page, I will display it again. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's how we connect pieces in, in, in Mojito for access. So we have these completely independent pieces they just use this common protocol to send data back and forth between different pieces in a secure way. Um, um, so, yeah, so that's, that's how we leverage the communication layer between an application. And it's really simple. So if I want to, to bring a new application into Access, it's really simple. Like, for example, this one, if I click here, uh, I'm getting this tool T type and this toolkit add to bookmark this application or this current URL is another application. So I'm just providing data that I have through this communication layer saying, yeah, run this application when it's ready, provide this data, wait for it to close it. When it closes, just remove that thing. Um, uh, so we can have these very small pieces that someone can work on and just ship it to production, it's ready. The API is always the same. So in the case of the bookmark, the only thing that we really have is the URL of the page. So just bookmark that URL, nothing else. Um, so, this so is that because it is built on the notion of Mojits and Mojits plug into Mojito and, and these Mojits have a definitive life cycle similar to like a widget or a, a base subclass or something in YUI that allow it that consistency of uh, the, the consistent life cycle that the other pieces in the in the Mojito application can uh, refer to or be uh, rely on, I suppose. No, not really. I think this this is more specific to Axis. So in Mojito, you can definitely have multiple modules working together to produce HTML, for example. Okay. Or even working together in the client side and to have just a very low level communication through YUI, custom events, or whatever because they are running on the same scope. This is more like a decision. What are the pieces that will be independent 
and independent in the sense that, that they will be running on the client side as individual applications. Um, and this one that I mentioned, the image one, is really simple because it's just a module, a single module, it doesn't do any, any, anything else, just receive data and do something with it. Um, but you can have more complex structures and uh, we do have some of them, like for example, let me find uh, one that has more complex structure. Um, and again, this is the decision that you have to make if the module will work as a composed module that will use other module to produce HTML and then it will eventually be deployed to the client side, it will create this client side application running on, on the runtime, in this case the browser or a web view or whatever. And at that point you have full access to whatever these module uh, provide, whatever feature this module provides. But if you look into um, into the context of the Mojito application in general, so Mojito application is way more complex than just that. So we might have different applications that you ship into the client side within a single Mojito application. I think that's more li more likely to be the, the, the explanation here. So I have a Mojito application that is physically deployed into one server, and this Mojito mm -hmm. application can produce different version of different apps that will be shipped to the client side. Does that make sense? More, makes more sense? Yeah, it makes a little more sense, yeah. Um, so this is so just, uh, just an aside before we continue on. Um, calling delegate with a star selector is effectively calling on. So you may as well just call on there instead of calling delegate. All right. Um, so, um, <laughs> Couldn't help it. <laughs> so other than that, what what we do, um, so, so also on the same line, we decide to have the, the, the decision making process that we use. We we want to have a new module or a new set of modules that work together to produce an application that will be shipped in the client side um, under the same scope or under the same Mojito application, only if they share some configuration. Like for example, configuration that we have here in the application, the JSON, we maybe have some sort of, for example, tracking information. So we want to track events at the at the Mojito app level. So all the apps that we produce in this Mojito application, they all use the same type of tracking information, so we can gather all this information later on and so on. So that's also one of the things that we that we explore. So putting into the application the JSON only the pieces that are really shared between all the modules that we will have in this application. And then each individual module will have their own configuration depending on, on what we want to do. Um, uh, so, so I didn't I didn't catch is application.json is that an access thing or is that a mojito thing? It's a mojito thing. Okay, okay. Um, so to wrap up on the dimension that I mentioned this is finite uh, uh, structure. So you have to put here, uh, you have to put here what are the dimensions that you want, what are the ones that you're going to target, and so on. So you cannot have dimensions that are outside of this configuration, um, which is in some cases nice. Uh, some people want to have like in, infinite dimensions and so on. It's a little bit more complex because it gets really, really complex when you have too many dimensions and too much configuration that you cannot even test because it all depends on requests from the client, the context information of the request. Maybe you want to differentiate between users that are running on AT&T and Verizon for whatever reason, for branding or whatever, uh, and so on. So testing this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so you have to be very careful about it. Um, um, so yeah, so this this is about dimensions. Other things that I wanted to mention uh, about access is the um, what else I have. Oh, the tunneling. Yeah, that one is very good. Um, so um, 
what happened is it what? so the other thing is a mojito there is no need so since you are creating these applications that are self-contained so it has everything that it needs and so on there is no need to create APIs that you expose for your application like JSON APIs. In our sense, in our case, we, we don't have any of them. We, we have our internal API wiring process, uh, but to expose to our application, we don't have any API. Even though I'm typing here, I don't know, avatar or whatever, I, I need to go someplace and get that content and display that content with the user. In, in Mojito, this, the whole concept of, of the difference between the server and the client is a little bit more blur. And because of that, at the client side, you can just invoke actions that are running on the server side, which is pretty nice because I don't need to have URLs, APIs, uh, or so on. It's just the same thing. And because it's the same thing, what I do is uh, I make an invoke, executing an action in the server side. And when, whenever I do that, uh, that server side will respond with exactly uh, the content that I'm expecting because it's the same application that is just running in two different places and so on. Um, so we don't have any API, no API, no JSON, no anything. It's just the tunneling request. And Mojito is handling the tunneling really nice. So um, I, ha I have this sort of model um, similar to what we have in, in the uh, in the YOI app model. Um, what we are doing here is deciding if we're going to use the version that we have in local cache or the version that we need to go and fetch it or depending on the condition and so on. So at some point I decide, yeah, I will go and I will fetch data that is coming from my Mojito version in server side. So my Mojito application running on server side. So what I'm doing here, I just saying I have this Mojit proxy and this is an object that will be created for every Mojit that you have in the client side running. Um, and I just make a call saying, by the way, go and get this image for me. And whenever you're ready, respond. Uh, so I don't need to pass any specific parameter to identify that user or the context in which that user is running and so on. The context actually travels back and forward between the server and the client. So whenever I, I call this thing, from the client side, he knows the context of this module, the context that was produced at the time that that module was generated in the first place at the server side, and it was shipped to the client side. Now making another call, so this goes back to the server with all this metadata information, so the server can actually restate the, the state of that module and refresh the state of that module making some changes on it and producing content back to, to the client as well. So this is really nice because I can even say, um, okay, I'm monitoring here the latency of every request that, that I'm making to the server side. Imagine that I'm just um, um, looking at the latency to try to identify if the user is running on 3G or, or Wi-Fi or, or high-speed internet connection so I can have my sensors in the client side, and at any given time I can say, yeah, by the way, the margin proxy context and the connection speed is now uh, 3E, because I have my own process or whatever to identify that. So I'm actually changing the context before hitting the server again. And when I hit the server, now the server will know exactly the context of that request. And that means that the server can decide, yeah, this user is running on 3 e Let's not send too, uh, too many uh, data in a sense of images that are need to be collected from over the wire or CSS or whatever. Let's just pack that into a single response. Let's send it to the client side because we know opening connection to get more data is expensive in 3 e So let's mash up all these and let's send it over to the client, for example. So in a sense, um, this will be accessible in this action that will be executed in the server side in, in a way that you actually use. So you have context information um, and then connection speed will connection speed will also be available there. But even more than that, it will 
being used to produce the configuration that this module will use on the server side, the configuration that I described before, this one. So imagine that I have here, and we do have some, some sort of stuff like that. Let me find it here. For example, um, the render. Let me find it. It's not here in the image. Under render, uh, yeah, render runtime. Um, I have by default the render runtime is client. So whenever we ask for images, the the image will be rendered in the client side. I mean the markup for that image, uh, always. But in, in, under some conditions, I can change that. I can say, by the way, if this image is is now running on on connection speed that is different, so the settings are a little bit different. So now I'm, I'm doing connection speed equal 3G. I want to change the way that my application works. So I want to use a different render runtime. I want to use server now. So I want to use my server now to actually produce the markup that will be just injected there with all the CSS and all the image match it up at the base 64 maybe or whatever. And then in my server, in my action, whenever this action get executed, this action is over here, maybe one that we mentioned was image, whatever. Data tunnel, this one, I can decide, okay, give me the configuration, get definition of what we call uh, render runtime. And based on this value, I can do something. So I can change the way that my application responds, even from the client side, changing the context that will be traveling through this tunnel process. This tunnel process will respond to whatever data I want. So it's a really nice concept of having this piece of configuration that goes back and forth between the server and the client. Yeah, that's nice to have that sort of convention in place and the objects are in place and uh, having that nice communication framework to allow the the server to respond a little more, more dynamically, or you know, as you as you want the server to respond dynamically to optimize its responses to the the client and the particular constraints of bandwidth and things like that. But having that having that uh, communication mechanism just built in, that's nice. Yeah. So uh, other things that are really nice in Mojito, at least for us, is that we don't need to worry about loader or uh, metadata or dependencies or any of that. Mojito is taking care of all that. So at the minute that I, I do uh, in my, for example, I don't know, in my image binder, the same that we, I'm, I'm saying these are the things that I need. Um, and since this is running Node.js in the server side, and in the server side, I'm specifically asking for this bind binder to be used whenever the controller puts HTML content to the client. The controller is saying, hey, by the way, make sure that you use this binder. And since this happening in Node.js, Node.js can go and pick up, um, and YUI on top of it, of course, um, pick up all the dependencies of this binder and then ship them as part of the process of flushing data into the client side, flushing dependencies, flushing requirements and all that to the client side. So I don't really need to worry about any of that. And of course we have the Mojito Shaker uh, component that does a little bit of work on top of it. Because it will create all these production ready content like minifying all these, merging the pieces into it, merging it in such a way that they work with the context. Um, and I, I think Diego will be doing some open hours or some more events describing how Shaker works. But the whole thing is that depending on the context that you are accessing, that you, depending on the context of associated with the request, we need to respond with different configurations. So we can exactly de decide based on the context what kind of files we need to send to the client side by by modules in this case. Uh, what are the CSS that we need to send? What are the language bundles that we need to send to the client side? Because we have the context, and the context will give you exactly what are the pieces that you will optimize for that user. And then on top of that, of course,
course, in, in YUI, you can uh, create the adaptation process for this component, like depending on the screen size, you might want to do different things, or depending on um, the media, CSS query, you do different things. So you, 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 YUI pieces become more like uh, pieces that will support adaptation rather than optimization, and Mojito takes care of the optimization for you through this structure and this um, configuration that will allow you to optimize before sending that to the client side. Yeah, Terry, have you, have you guys um, <clears throat> been seeing patterns coming out of this uh, that, that you're consistently implementing on top of Mojito that, that could maybe start to roll into Mojito's core framework so that you wouldn't necessarily have to provide all this additional configuration when there's like a, <clears throat> a standard way you want to handle, say, something like the, the connection, uh, the connection speed, or just having that data available. Um, uh, have, yeah. have you been so, seeing anything yeah, like we, that coming? We, we did. Yeah, we did um, look into some of the patterns. For example, most of these dimensions are JSON. You don't even need to define it because Mojito is providing a default one for you. And a default mm -hmm. one that is pretty, um, um, pretty simple, but it covers environments and devices and, and runtimes and so on, even language, default language and all that, or a bunch of them, actually. We just wanted to define just subset of those that we want. But we did talk about it, like maybe we should have more of this dimension to JSON in, in, in a sense that I can create, and we have a little bit of time only, but Mojito is also supporting this concept of NPM packages as pieces of the Mojito application, which means that I can go and I can create this package that is an NPM package, it's a dependency define it in my application, they will bring a file that will be called dimension dash network speed dot JSON, for example. Right? And it will bring this configuration, like a basic configuration that will be aggregated with the default dimension dot JSON. And it also brings some other logical pieces that will take care of, like a middleware container, middleware piece that will take care of trying to identify the default connection speed based on the IP address or whatever. And then in every request, tunnel request, it will just adjust that context based on information that is coming from the client. So yes, definitely there are a lot of pieces that could be potentially created, isolated, in an isolated fashion that we can plug into application. I don't know if this will end up being part of the Mojito. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so because Mojito created this infrastructure for NPM packages, and we do have one of them, I told you. I think Fabian will be talking a little bit more about um, those, but um, I think it's, uh, it's an action context, an action context called why, why logging. Yeah, so I I don't, I don't know where it is. Um, there is a, a way to just provide is couple of, oh, sorry. Uh, it's in no module, it's a requirement. So here you're saying, um, this NPM package, by the way, is a Mojito bundle, which means that it will bring some pieces that Mojito will just assume that are part of the application. So you are bringing data into your Mojito application just by having an NPM package. So we don't really need to bring all these into Mojito. We probably have to just start creating them in the same fashion that we do gallery modules today. Hmm. Okay, uh, we are uh, we're out of time, so we'll have to to wrap it up about there, is there any last bits of wisdom that you wanted to share, or do you think you've covered pretty much all that you wanted to cover? Well, I covered just a little bit of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully we can have more people like, um, uh, this is an example of, I'm tweaking my, since I'm running on that mode, I can tweak any context information, so it's easy for me to debug things and try things, so I'm saying, by the way, assume that this is device iPhone. I don't need to do all the mojito detection mm. for that. So I can click that. So you see I'm, I'm having 
console here, where it's easy for me um, to debug that kind of stuff. And since I'm creating these pieces that are independent, for example, for us, it's really difficult to, to, to test this thing because you have at least two pieces that need to work together. So unless that I run mm -hmm. this image application within access, it's difficult for me to do it. So what I have, or what we have is some sort of, for example, we pass this context information saying headless equal one. So I have this little nice thing here that allow me to just change the query and so on because it's not running on the context of search ads in an iPhone yeah. or an iPad, which is different from what one well where it runs here. So there is this thing here that is completely mm -hmm. isolated from this one, but it provides data. So that actually does raise the question about what is the best place or the best medium in, in which to get to ask follow up questions or to get more details about this or if there there were any uh, or um, to get a peek at the source that sort of thing. So we we, we plan to do an open out uh, no an open out oh, well, there you go. Ajax next Monday. So you can answer it. I think that we'll record some of the session, but we will do three different sessions uh, um, to cover some of these areas and also to provide more feedback and provide more links and stuff that you can go and look at it. And Mojito has a lot of documentation already. I think there are things that are missing, like maybe a screencast or people explaining in details how to create this application from the ground up and so on, but hopefully we'll get to that. Today, it's just the Mojito documentation and whatever you can gather from. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to share the link to the Mojito documentation while, you, while I have you? Yeah, so you, uh, you know, we are, we we'll start from here. <laughs> Starting from GitHub, I like that. Yeah, and we go from there. You know, we have the links down here to the Mojito page and documentation, mm. facts, intros, and so on. So go from there. And nice. Yeah. That's easy to remember. So GitHub slash Yahoo slash Mojito. All right. Well, cool. Thanks for joining us again, Carity. Um Sorry, Eugene couldn't join us today. I guess he had something. Uh, Something a little more pressing to deal with, yeah. um, and uh, and like I mentioned before, hopefully in a couple of weeks we will have another mojito, uh, uh, another mojito esque session. We're going to be, uh, but the focus there is going to be more on the getting started from the ground up sort of thing. So sort of in, in a layman's way, be sort of like an hour long screencast, if you will. But uh, maybe in the future that'll get broken down into more isolated chunks uh, within the documentation. That's the public documentation for Mojito. But I think that there's plenty of good stuff that can get packed into that hour and uh, being recorded. You'll at least be able to review it in whole and in parts and and uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, so we'll close out again. Thanks, Carity, for joining us, and uh, thanks everyone else for dialing in. And we will. See you again in about a week. I think I have a plan for open hours next week, and you'll see the topic of that uh, in the invite in a couple of days. So for um, Eric and myself and all of us on the YUI team and uh, everyone that loves YUI, we'll see you guys in a week. Talk to you later.